Ciao, fantastici hacker. Hey, what's up, you amazing hackers? Hope you're all doing well today. So, I've written down in my little book for you some notes. A lot of you have been asking, what is API testing? By the way, that intro you saw was from a subscriber. Thank you very much for sending it in. If you want to be in one of the editors as well, send it to info at the So what is an API? Because everybody knows what it is, sort of. You've all heard about application programming interfaces. But okay, what are we really talking about here? Because there are different architectures of APIs, which is really important to know. And there's different types of APIs. And I'll talk a little bit about every single one of these. Now, there's going to be an article soon on my Medium, as usual. Um, this is a pretty cool topic, in my opinion. And then in this video, we'll go into what the APIs are and their architectures. And then in the next videos, we're going to explain a little bit about hacking an API. Because APIs are basically vulnerable just to like business logic vulnerabilities as well. That's what a lot of people seem to forget. Um, but you'll have to think of it as a little bit differently because you have these different types, these different architectures. So let's talk a little bit about the architectures first. Okay, so you have, of course, your REST architecture. Now, your REST architecture is basically a set of rules. It's going to determine how your client interacts with a server. And of course, you can choose to implement them as you go, uh, but it's best to have them all implemented. There is one optional one, um, and it's mostly like, what's really important for REST is that you have a uniform interface. By the way, sorry about that. The Italians won the European Championships. Really cool, really cool. Um, so the uniform interface means that every single request that I make, it needs to look the same. There can't be too much deviation, otherwise it's not going to be compliant with the REST architecture. Now there's also going to be client-server decoupling necessary, uh, and, and REST is going to be stateless. Now stateless means that from one request to another, so if I have, for example, a company and I have a couple of leads that I want to take in. I'm going to enter them into my program. After a while, some of them are going to buy something from me. So I sent them off a quote um, and then that quote, I'm going to send a invoice on. Invoice is going to turn into an order. Order is going to get turned into an execution. So those things, like if you want to remember from A to Z, all of these different things that go into a specific uh, flow, that's going to be stateful, but in REST it's stateless. So that means every single call is going to be able to operate independently from other calls. That means that you'll never have to chain calls. Otherwise, again, not going to be REST compliant. And of course, there is the cacheability. Uh, cacheability is an important topic because your API response needs to be cacheable. Now, you probably know what that means, just being able to cache it. That's simple enough. Uh, and then the layered system approach is also something that's very important in REST, where you go for things like load balancers um, that keep the traffic through your APIs, maybe even microservices. So that's a layered system. It's that you're going to have different complexities in your system, these different layers that are going to send data from one layer to another. That's very important. You need to have the separation of the layers. So I need to have one layer and when a request comes in, it's not going to touch the second layer before it touched the uh, first one. That's a layered system. Then you have your SOAP request as well. Um, there's a lot more security on SOAP. It's a lot tighter. So as you can imagine, financial systems are more prone to use it. Anything that has um, secure data that needs to be transferred, that's going to use it, of course, as well. Now, end-to-end -end reliability is also going to be improved because of, first of all, statefulness. That's very important. End-to-end -end reliability increases um, dramatically if you have statefulness. Then there's going to be SOAP. It's often preferred for sensitive information because of the ACID principle. Now, ACID is just a way to handle data, uh, but it's much more secure and companies often prefer it. Well, not much more. I should say it's a little bit more diligent with the data and how it handles it. If you are interested in it, you should totally look up the ACID uh, system for soap. Well, it's not soap specific. 
um, but it will help make that connection. At least for me it did. But you can look it up in any way that you want. Everybody is a different tool learner, of course. Then there's the API types as well, because if I create an API type, I can either set it to open or I can create an open API, which means that everybody is going to be able to access my API, no matter where they come from, no matter who they are. Now, I can also uh, in, set up an internal API, something that nobody else is supposed to touch, only from the internal network. Uh, there's also a partner API, which allows specific uh, groups or organizations or people to actually access those APIs. That's also possible. Um, but then it's not open to the public anymore, of course. And also we have a composite API, which is possible, which is going to make things, oops, sorry about that, which is going to be a mix. There's something's not going right here. I'm going to close it off, which is going to be a mixture of all three types. So thank you very much for watching. Sorry about all of these funny things that keep happening here and that's not good. It's a test setup, but it wasn't good to begin with. So I'm going to try and improve it. Thank you very much for watching Amazing Hacker and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.